Hi, Morinville. Thank you for joining us for a snowman painting for the Snowman Festival here in Morinville. Uh, just some reminders. The Snowman Festival runs from February 14th to the 28th, and we will have a whole bunch of activities to be completed safely by the community for you to do. Uh, there is a variety of indoor and outdoor activities that can be done with most skill levels, ages, and abilities. Activities are free and all event, de event details are available on the website and on Facebook. And with that, we're gonna start with our snowman painting. So if you've picked up your kit uh, from the MCC or the library, right? Um, you will be receiving in your bag these items. So you're going to have a canvas, a paintbrush, and two containers of paint, so white and black. What I've done to start us off here is just in some little cups so that you can see as we mix, we're going to mix some shades of gray that we'll be using, and we're gonna start with the white and the black right here. So I've got my paintbrush. we are be using a flathead paintbrush, which is a really good choice um, because it is so versatile. If you have extra paintbrushes at home, uh, bring them out and feel free to use them with, uh, with whatever, I, whatever other tools that you have, whether that be your fingertips or even some Q-tips, okay? So we'll leave those off to the side, but we're gonna start by mixing our paint. So we're gonna be creating three different shades of gray. We'll start with our darkest shade. So we're gonna take just one little dollop of white and a little bit of black. Now all you're going to do is just keep mixing it. You can use uh, for your palette, a pie plate works really well. Uh, you can use plastic lids, I've used those before. Uh, anything that you have lying around the house that you won't mind getting paint on. So we're gonna take a little bit more here actually because we're gonna use this as our darkest color. So what you want to end up with is a nice dark shade of gray. And just scrape off your paintbrush. And then we'll start with the mid, or we'll finish with the mid gray here. So a little bit of white. So mixing the mid tone, you're just going to make a gray that's a little bit lighter than your darkest gray. And then for your lightest shade, you're gonna use the most white. So you're gonna to wanna to get quite a bit of white in one pile and then adding just a little bit of black to create that nice light gray. And then scraping that off. So I'm going to rinse my brush now. And of course you're gonna to wanna to have some water just in an old cup works. And here I also have some fresh water in a cup, just so that I can use droplets of it to uh, thin the paint a little bit, which you can do um, as we go. All right, so now to start, your canvas is going to be nice and dry. We're going to want to moisten it just a tiny bit. Um, you don't want too much, just enough that the paint is going to glide over the canvas a little bit. And you're gonna take your darkest gray to start. So we're going to start in one corner, top right hand corner I'm starting in. And you're just gonna work that paint into the canvas with your brush. And you'll notice that if you're not using a tiny bit of water, you can use your paintbrush to spread some water um, on the canvas before you start, but if you're not using it, you're gonna find that your canvas is very dry and that the paint isn't going to work into the canvas. So you might end up with um, things that like this, and it's gonna be very difficult. You'll end up using much more paint than you need to to cover the surface. So just that little tiny bit of water is gonna help you to save quite a bit of paint. All right, so as you've guessed, we are painting our sky, you'll notice 
our darkest part is going to be the darkest part of this of all the sky here and that's what we're working on you can make this as dark as you want it but don't go quite black because we're going to be adding some black um, little details that you want to be able to stand out all right and then going back to the left hand corner and working that paint in same as you did on the other side I'm going to leave a little bit of a white area right here just for my moon that way I don't have to wait completely for this dark color to dry before I am able to paint that white on there All right, so just keep working that paint into the canvas and don't worry about your horizon line and that's this line here you can go down a little bit further um, and then we'll be able to paint our horizon however you want however you want your background to look um, or the lay of your land to look I'm just going to take this off really quick okay so once you have all that dark gray kind of worked into the canvas make sure that you're covering any little white spots you may have missed And you're welcome to paint the sides as well. I, um, I do like this, the look of a painted side, but you can definitely just leave your edges plain if you'd like. All right. So now that we've got the ground or the background for the sky covered, we're going to paint a little bit of the moon just as our base color. So we're gonna go with our lightest gray I'm going to take a little bit of that and you're going to just paint around a rounder shape in the sky. You can have your moon as big or as little as you want. And what I like to do is just creating some light circles and going out and mixing that light gray into the dark gray so that you're creating kind of rings around the moon that shows that reflection of light. And again, you can make these as big or as little as you want. Your reflection can go right out into the sky. You can make it brighter if you want. Whatever you want, it is your painting. Okay. And now that we've got the base of our sky done, we're gonna work on the ground. So for the ground, we're going to actually use our mid-tone gray. So that's that medium gray that we mixed up. I'm just going to take a little bit of that and this is where you're going to draw what you want your background horizon to look like so this is what the ground looks like it can be have lots of rolling hills it can be straight across if you want it can look however you want it to look and don't worry about the gray we are going to be adding some highlights to make that horizon pop but we're going to just use this as our shadow color to start and so the same thing as with the sky you're going to want to cover as much of the base as you possibly can and what I'm going to do is leave a little space because over here or if it's it's your painting you may choose to do your snowman over here but mine's going to be over here and I'm going to just draw a circular area so that I don't cover that all with paint it kind of just leaves a little area for the white to pop and you're not layering this will also help with your drying time all right so just covering all of this in with that mid gray and just making sure that you're working that paint all the way into the little fibers of the canvas okay, and all the way back here So right now we're doing what I would normally call color blocking. You're just putting the basis of your colors down and then you're going to build the painting up with just different highlights. All right, so once you've got all of that paint mixed in, and pushed into that canvas 
you may notice that you have some little lumps and bumps what you might want to do is just smooth them out so that you have the direction of the paint going you can take off any excess paint you have on your canvas and then just smooth it out all right so there that's it that's your basic color blocking that's the base of your painting now we're going to start putting in some details I'm just going to rinse my brush and I always make sure I have either a rag or some paper towel um, next to me so that I can wipe my paintbrush as as I go okay so now we're going to start by adding a little bit of highlight and actually no we're actually going to start with adding some detail so we're going to add some trees in the background and this is where we're going to use just that black paint and this is why I have some of this clean water here so I can take a couple drops and make this black paint just a little tiny bit thinner. You want it to be like an inky consistency so that it spreads really easily. And you're going to really like this flathead paintbrush for this very reason. So you can do broad strokes with it like you would have just done to do your background. You can also do fine detail strokes by using the edge of the brush. So what you want to do when you're loading your paintbrush is whether it's on a flat surface palette or in a little cup like I'm doing is you want to just push each side of the paintbrush so that it's loaded but you have a tapered end so it's as skinny as that paintbrush can be. And now what we're going to do is drop in some of these little pine trees on the sides, okay? So we'll drop in a couple up here. We're just going to take the edge of the brush, holding it straight up and down, and then pulling up nice and gentle. You don't want to do it press too hard. What happens then is you'll just get a big blob of black paint. So you're just using the very tip of that brush. And gently pulling up. Now the other technique you can use with this brush, um, a seasoned painter will use usually a fan brush but we're going to use the tip of the brush to paint our leaves or our branches on our pine tree. So you're going to just very gently use the corner only of the brush to do the top tip of the tree and you're kind of going to go back and forth in a zigzag motion. Now when you get to the bottom of the tree, you can hold your paintbrush up and down and move back and forth in the same fashion. So you kind of get that zigzag motion that looks like a pine tree there. I'm going to load a little bit more paint and do the same thing with this little guy standing next to him. So just using the very corner and then tilting your paintbrush. to get the bigger branches on the bottom. So I'm going to drop in a couple more on this side. Just loading my brush again because you want all that paint to be right at the tip of your brush when you start. So we'll do one more pine tree on this side. And again, tilting your brush using the corner, a little zigzag and tap motion moving back and forth. And then as you work your way to the bottom, you can use that whole flat part of the head. Just like that. Now a different style of tree we're going to be doing, um, and you don't have to do it if you don't want to, only if you're comfortable. Um, you can use one of your skinnier paintbrushes at home, or you can continue to use this flathead paintbrush. You're just going to want to load the bristles again and we're going to create the bones of a tree. So same thing, you're going to hold your paintbrush straight up and down and you're going to pull up. But this way you can twist and turn however you want, however you want your tree to look. You just need to hold the paintbrush lightly against the canvas. If you press too hard, like this, you're going to get a thicker line. So if you want a nice thin line, make sure that your paintbrush is loaded with paint and you're just 
holding it lightly against the canvas. And then drag to make those branches however you want. It's your tree. You can shape it as, as, as you wish. Add as many branches as you like. And just using the corner, you can add just little tiny branches too. So again, you can add as little or as much as you want. There we go. Just make that trunk a little bit wider there. And we've got the basis for our trees. So we'll put that black off to the side. By this time, some of our sky and our base should be dry. So we're going to start working with a little bit of white. Let's start brightening this painting up. Okay, so again, rinsing your brush, getting all that black and gray out, and then using our white color. So this is where we're going to start adding some brightness to the moon. So you're going to take some white you're kind of gonna just plop it on there trying to trying your best to make the best circle you can it's very hard to draw a circle um, painting one I find is a little bit easier and this is where you want to start small and work your way out you may end up with a moon that's a little bit bigger than you like or you can make a great big moon and maybe that's exactly what you want maybe it's a super moon so we're going to add some white right there. And there, you've got your moon painted. So we'll let that dry now. And we're going to use the white to start on the snowman. So we're going to lay the base of the snowman right here. So taking some more white. And again, you can do a, circle or a circular snowman or you can do a lumpy snowman. I don't know about you, but when we build snowmen at home, they are never a perfect ball. They've got leaves and old grass stuck in them, uh, sometimes some dirt, but they never look completely round. So the base of my snowman here is going to be a little bit boxy, a little bit misshapen. There we go. So we've got the first ball. Now some snowmen only have two. Maybe you want to make a bigger bottom half of the body with just a head. I'm going to do all three levels of the snowman um, and we're going to add that second body piece right here. It's a little bit smaller than your bottom piece. And again, don't be worried about if it's completely circle. Snowmen are imperfect and that's what's what makes them so special. And the last piece of course is the head. So it can be a little head, a big head, a misshapen head, square head, whatever you want. And everything you're doing right now is exactly perfect. I know a lot of people say that they can't paint, but I'll tell you, I have, if you can hold a paintbrush, you can paint. Anybody can do this. All right. So there we have the basis of our snowmen. We have the basis of our trees and our background all done. Now we're going to add a little bit of shading to the ground or highlight I should say not shading you've got your shading already in place here so again we're going to be continuing to use that white color I'm just going to take off some of the paint and we're going to actually add a little bit of water here so I can thin out the white just a tiny little bit if you feel comfortable with the thinness of your paint then by all means just use it as it is all right, so now that I've mixed that water with that white paint to make it a little bit more flowy, we're going to load the paintbrush. So again, scraping both sides and coming down so you have a nice taper. We're going to start with highlighting the top. And you can see the shininess of this paint here. So it is a little bit wet. So it is going to get a little bit muddled, but we are going to do our best. So we're going to trace the top. of that horizon. Until we get a little bit of a lighter horizon there. Good. Very 
bring it on to the other side of our snowman. Good. And this is where I like the liquidiness of the paint. So this is why I like to thin it out a little bit. I want to be able to create almost what we call a wash. So you want a lighter white, not a very thick, dark white. You want a lighter white to start throwing in all of your highlights. So everywhere the moon is hitting the ground, that's where you're going to want to put this paint. Now I'm going to put a little bit of water on my paintbrush and I use the clean water because I'm working with the pristine white right now just to make it a little bit more spreadable. And you're just thinking about where that moon is hitting the ground and wherever you think the moon is hitting the ground is where you're going to want to add a little bit of white and you're going to blend it in so you could have hills in the background you could have flat ground it's like I said it's your world it's whatever you want now if you have a spray bottle I love using the spray bottle to create shadow and highlight because you can miss this is my old spray bottle it's a, been well used but just by adding a little bit that water helps that color move. You could add a couple of drops of water to your canvas if you want to, but for shading I find that it just makes the paint move so easily and you get a, a much nicer result. Alright, so got some hills back here creating all kinds of shadow and depth and highlight. And then coming out from the snowman here, we're just going to add highlight wherever you want. Okay. So right down here, actually, the snowman is probably sitting on a highlighted piece of snow. I'm going to do the same over here. Dipping my brush with a little bit of water to smooth this out. Yeah. If you want rough lines, you can have rough lines. Obviously, I'm a person that really likes nice clean lines, so you'll notice that I, I like to smooth things out. Again, there's no right or wrong way. Um, as long as you're adding some of that white there, it's going to look just perfect. Adding some, uh, some highlight by the trees here because the moon is shining this way and we're going to do some shadow there right away and on this side but I'll finish up this side water help to smooth that out remember make sure you're using the clean water you don't want to use your muddy water on here because you are using white okay and as this dries a little bit and there we go got some dirty snow got some shady snow got some bright snow So however long it takes you to do your highlight, take your time. You can do it really quick. It's totally up to you, but there's no rush. And remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause this video until uh, you can catch up and you get it looking exactly how you want it to look. All right. So I'll add a little bit more to the horizon or to the tip of my hill um, some more white but I'm going to wait for that part to dry a little bit before I do that okay now we're going to add some highlight to the trees and again we're taking some white but my brush did get a little bit muddy so I was rinsing it off we're going to again add a little bit of white to our brush and this is where with the black when we did the trees we're going to want just a little tiny bit of paint 
and we're going to have to form that brush so it's nice and flat so you have sharp edges and a nice clean line. So this is where you're going to want to have a nice light touch because we're just going to add a little bit of white to highlight the branches right where that moon is going to hit. So you can just imagine in your mind's eye where that moon is going to be touching those branches and that's where we want to gently touch with our paintbrush with a little bit of white. So we're just going to add, again, don't touch very hard. You just want a little, little bit of pressure just to add some white highlight there where that moon would be touching. All right, and then we're going to move over and do it on the next tree. Just using the corner and light a nice light touch. Okay. Also, I have a little bit of a trunk down here, so we're going to add a little bit of highlight to the trunk. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. So on this side, though, the moon is reaching this way. So we want our highlight to be on this side where the moon is going to be touching. So just lightly touching with the corner of your brush tips of your branches where that moon is going to be hitting. You can turn it sideways this tree is a little bit. There we go. All right, and then we're going to do the trunk, so just a little line on that side there. Perfect. Now the highlight's also hitting this tree. And this tree is the same principle. You're just going to be highlighting the side that the light is going to be hitting. Um, and then for this part, I don't use the corner. I use the whole flat edge. So you want to be using this flat edge so you can lightly rest it. And then just dab where that moon is hitting. So it'll all be on all of these sides of our branches there. It doesn't have to hit every single nook and cranny. It's just wherever the paint lands is where it's perfect. So adding a highlight in all those little branches, making them pop. There we go. So now your tree is highlighted. Now I do think that we probably need a little bit more time for our snowman but he might be okay to start doing some shading we're going to start shading our no our snowman so he looks a little bit more realistic so i'm not going to rinse out my brush there was hardly any white in there but i will wipe it off onto my paper towel all right so shading is the fun part so we're actually going to take our lightest gray and load our brush with that lightest gray. Okay, so for the fun part. So again, our shadow is going to be on the side that the moonlight is not hitting. So this is going to be the bright side of our snowman, and this is going to be the darker side of our snowman. So that's where we're going to put our shadow. And to do that, you're just going to, I'm going to start on the bottom here. You're just going to kind of trace or lightly place gray. All right, so just shading this bottom piece with that lightest shade of gray. You're going to just lightly come on the inside of that white ball, almost like a backward C. And then just keep working it into the paint. This is where I also like to grab a little bit of fresh water just on the tip of my brush so I can help that blend into the white that's coming in the middle. And you're almost going to want to paint almost like a moon shape, actually, with the darkest gray on the outside, working in lighter towards the center. But you're not going to really want to come in onto this side. Just a little tiny bit more water. Same idea. Until you feel like you've shaded your um, bottom circle the way that you'd like it to be. We are going to add a little bit more darker right on the edge here, but this is our lightest shading color. So we're going to take a little bit more of that 
lightest gray and we're going to do the same thing with the second layer with the torso of our snowman again adding some color taking a little bit of that fresh water and then using it to blend until we get that color exactly how we want it to be so the two circles the bottom circle and this top circle are going to meet right here And now for the head, same process. Taking a little bit of water, and the water is the key. It's going to help you blend. So, and remember, not too much, just a little tiny bit. This really helps that paint to spread. All right. So now we've got the basic basis of our shading done for the snowman we're going to actually go to our mid gray so that's that medium gray that we made and we're going to do a little bit more shading but we're going to be a little bit more sparing with this shading we're going to have it right on the very edge of our snowman okay so again loading my brush but not so that i have too much paint on it so that I have just a little bit and I'm going to turn this so that I can you can use you can move your canvas around any way that you want to this just helps me to uh, to get to this side so now we're going to go right to the edge and we're going to put our darkest gray right on the very edge of that snowman blending it into that light gray we already placed down I'm going to take a little bit of water just to help that gray spread and then you're going to blend that into the light gray. So not coming all the way in, but keeping it on the edge there. Taking a little bit more paint. And then doing the same thing to the torso section of our snowman. Just pulling it and blending it into that first gray we did. And then of course, the last part, which is the head of our snowman. Same thing. It's amazing that you can do all of this with just black and white paint. Now, of course, if you have colors at home, I'm going to be doing some details here right away. If you have colors, you're more than welcome to use your own paints and colors, um, blues and greens and whatever that whatever colors that you like especially when it gets to doing the scarf you could add a hat all kinds of things to your own snowman um, with what you with supplies that you have already at home all right so there's the shading of my snowman i'm actually going to clean up the white a little bit so i'm going to rinse my brush get that gray and black out of there i'm going to take a little bit of white Looks like I got some dirty streaks in my snowman. I'm just going to clean up the edge of him a little bit. And fill in some of that so he's nice and bright on this side. And the same up here. And you can fix up your snowman however you want him to be. So one thing I actually missed here a little bit is I want to create a little bit of separation between the different his different segments. So I'm just taking some of that mid gray again and I'm going to just give a little bit of an impression of where the one ball is resting on top of the other. Just like that. Darkening it up and darkening it up on the bottom because this is going to be the most shadowy part. And actually, we're going to do shadows next. So just like the moon has created highlights in the trees and in our snowman, it's also creating sh darker shadows in other areas. Um, so we're going to do that now. And we're going to be using our darkest gray for that. I'm going to take a little bit of water and making a nice inky consistency with my darkest gray and again loading the paintbrush and we're going to start down here with the snowman so uh, 
All right, so just making that shadow on this side of the snowman, just on the bottom. So you're taking that dark color and just sliding it over. So remember, the moon is the moonlight shining this way. So there's going to be no light behind the snowman here. And we're going to do the same things with the trees. Okay, so the moon is shining this way. We're going to do the shadows of the trees. And oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to grab a little bit of water because you want it a little bit watered down. You want a very light touch. You don't need to add a whole lot of color, just a tiny bit of color. So just taking a little bit of that watered down gray and creating the impression of a shadow. So you can see my tree kind of goes behind the hill here, so I don't need to do that whole one. All right, and then doing these ones as well, you're going to want to have the shadow coming this way. So basically, I just draw some little lines and then just the impression of a tree. Your shadow is not going to be the exact replica of your tree, the trees that you put in, because of course there's going to be all kinds of bumps and valleys and things like that that are on the ground that are making the light refraction a little bit different. There you go. So you created shadows for your snowman and your trees. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the top of my hill here because now it looks like it's sufficiently dry. So taking that white, and of course the moon is hitting right here, so it's going to be the brightest spot. You really want to make that pop. We're almost done. You guys have done amazing. I hope to see all of your creations posted online. I love these types of things because even though we're all kind of copying the same picture, trying to do the same picture, everybody's looks so different and it's amazing to see how you, you're, you end up creating yourself or creating art how we all create art so differently. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. All right. So just brightening up any lines that you want to do. Okay. And now we're going to finish with our snowman. So this is where we're going to do some details. And this is where you can use some different tools that you have at home. You can also use just this paintbrush. And I'll show you a little trick that I like. I'm just going to lighten this up here. Blend it in a little bit more. Okay, so um, to create dots, um, it's very difficult to do even when you're using a regular paintbrush. Uh, you don't always get a complete dot. Uh, so what I like to do is flip the paintbrush over. You're not going to use the brush side, you're actually going to use uh, the tip of your paintbrush. Uh, and you will get a perfect dot every single time if you do if you do it this way. So we're going to take our black paint. We're going to create our snowman's face now. Uh, we'll start with the eyes. So we're going to take that paint. You're just going to dab it in there so you have a little dab on the end of your paintbrush. Yeah. Okay. And that's when you just dot it. Use it to dot. And I want my eyes big, so I'm going to... Just keep it on the canvas and do a little widening circle until I get it the right size of eye that I want. Oh, didn't get enough paint there. There we go. There's lumps of coal. We're going to do the same thing for the nose. Now again, if you have um, colored paint at home, um, you can paint uh, an orange carrot nose, anything you want. But today we're doing a little button nose, so it's going to be just black. And we're going to do the same with the mouth, but we want little dots for that, so I'm going to not 
used so much paint on the end of my paintbrush. I'm actually going to just again water down my paint just a tiny bit because I only want to drop a tiny bit on each little stone that's going to be my mouth. So the thicker your paint, the bigger the dollop is going to be like that. The thinner the paint, the smaller the dollop. So I'm going to just dip into that thinned paint and then just place as many little dots as you want the mouth to be made up of. There you go, pretty easy. So you're dotting that on. Now you have the face. We can do a little bit of a highlight there too, just to make his eyes shine. And then we'll do a little bit of accessories. Okay, so I'm taking a tiny bit of white. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to do it in the eyes right here where the moon is hitting it and a little bit on the nose too. If you're very steady, you can try getting a little highlight on each one of those um, mouth rocks, but I don't think I'm that steady today. All right, so now we're going to do the scarf. And this again, if you have colored paint at home, would be beautiful if you did it in a blue or a red or a green, whatever color calls to you. It would just be that pop of color on the painting. That would be really nice. But I'm going to be doing gray today. So I'm going to be taking that mid-tone gray And this is pretty pretty easy so all you're going to do is just draw a line right on his neck actually you can you can flatten the brush so it makes a wider scarf just like that from one side to the other and then I'm going to just take a little bit more paint kind of do a ball that signifies uh, the knot on the side and then you can have the scarf go however you want it. So one end I'm having there and one end that's gonna fall down here. Now if you wanna drop in uh, maybe some lines or some dots, you can do that as well. And what I'm gonna do for lines on mine is I'm just going to rinse my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of that liquefied black load a tiny bit on the very end of my brush so that I've got that nice sharp edge to it again and then all I'm going to do is just drop in some impressions of lines and again you can do any design that you want to do there we go Oh, actually, maybe a little bit of fringe on the bottom so you can tell that it's the end. This is the corner of the brush. Do a little fringe and there you go. Of course, you can add buttons and things down the front if you want to. I didn't do that in my original one, but we can do that right here. So if you want to add some buttons, there we go. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want. Add a hat whatever you like. Okay, so we are almost done. But one thing I'm noticing that we're missing is the arms, right? So we want our friendly snowman to have arms that he can wave to people as they walk by or look like they're gonna give you a big hug. That's why I like snowmen so much um, because they are so friendly and they encourage hugs and they kind of protect your yard. I always felt that way. So I always beg my kids every winter to build me a snowman army. Sometimes they do it and sometimes they don't. I consider myself lucky when they do. I just think they're the most fun that winter can bring. All right. So what we're going to do for the arms is the same thing that we technique we used for the tree is we're going to create branches. So I've loaded the brush with that thinner black paint and made sure that I had my paintbrush with a nice sharp edge. So same thing as when you did the tree. We're just going to drop in little branches or arms. You can make them as tiny or as big as you want. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. we 
we go. And then we'll add a little highlight in a moment when that's done. Now, this next part you can or you don't have to do is the snow. So snow is fairly easy too. You can use the same technique using the back of your paintbrush. Um, if you have different size paintbrushes, each one of your paintbrushes will give you a different size dot when you press down. Or um, on this one, what I did use was some Q-tips to kind of experiment. So what I found was the Q-tips are really great for making these nice big ones, but if you want tiny little dots of snow, um, it doesn't work as well. So you're going to want to use either the end of your paintbrush or a little paintbrush. Um, though if you want to add dimension, it is best to use different um, dots, uh, different size dots for your snow. And I've used different shades of gray as well. So you could do all white, you could do um, all light gray or dark gray, whatever it is that calls to you, you can absolutely do. Uh, so for this, I'm actually going to do some bigger white dollops with the Q-tip. And actually, I don't know why I was going to wet that. You don't need to wet it. You're just going to take some of your white paint on the end of your Q-tip. Now, don't scoop up too much. You kind of want to just make sure that you're just picking up a little bit of paint. And then you're going to just press that paint where you want that snow to be. So falling all around. Again, it may not be snowing in your painting. It's totally up to you what you decide to do. With the cold weather like how it is, it would be nice to have some snow to match it. At least you'd have something to show for it and could go tobogganing. Let's just hope that we're all able to do that and go. In. All right, so I've done the white with the bigger dots. And now I'm going to do a couple of littler dots with the end of my paintbrush and that just shows it just kind of shows that the paint is further away so when you do littler dots if they're littler and darker that means that, that that snow is falling farther away and the bigger the snow is it's falling closer to you so it, it's uh it's uh, going to be bigger by dimension all right so we're almost done our painting i really hope that you've enjoyed doing this with your families today um, or if you're by yourself i hope you enjoyed some nice quiet time i know it's my favorite thing to do to spend time with myself and it's also one of my favorite things to do with my family um, whatever your situation i hope you're safe healthy warm and enjoying this family day weekend so that's it you can create as much snow or as little snow as you want and i really hope that you've enjoyed this and uh, that you've made it yours i'm really looking forward to seeing your creations online like i said and remember to join us for all of the other things going on for the snowman festival one last thing i'm going to mention before we finish here is sign your work a lot of people don't like to do that i never understood it but it might mean something to somebody in the future always sign your work so I just used a little Sharpie on this one. You can use a paintbrush, whatever you like, but it's your work, own it, be proud of your creation. And I hope you all keep creating as we're all stuck together in our homes. Thank you and have a great evening or morning whenever you're doing this. Blessings to you all.